Welcome to the game of Risk, everyone. I am your host, Olive XC. I am a top Grandmaster with over 1,000 hours of experience in this game. If you like this content, like, comment, subscribe, and see more videos like this one. Today, I am doing a classic fixed game on the, uh, the classic map. The settings that we can see here are on a global domination on the classic map. Auto, 60 seconds, expert AI, ranked, uh, fixed, alliances on, fog off, blizzards on. The players that we have are General Suresh, who gets an alliance request. Williams Carpy, who gets an alliance request. Myself. Chad Diktoski, who gets an alliance request. Leonard Tandon, who gets an alliance request. And finally, General Dagger, who gets an alliance request. We can see uh, as a board uh, is developing here that the blue player has gotten a very, very strong start and has taken over the Australia continent, which I believe is a very strong first move. However, there's a very strong chance, I think, that the pink player is going to retaliate against them. Now, for me, uh, in my turn and, and what's going on, uh, the, I think the yellow player has the strongest spot uh, on this board right here. They, have, they can go for a, a, a two-border uh, North America play uh, very easily, or they can eventually try to go for South America. I'm not sure about what they're going to want to do. I think uh, the best thing that I can do for myself is uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, some troops here because this is where the majority of my uh, armies are. I'm going to attack the two right here. Didn't get the best roll, but not the worst one. And then there's fortify here. And I'm going to see how the, the yellow player re reacts. Hopefully, I think they'll go up and, if, and get out of uh, South America and let me hold it. Yes. The yellow player wants to be in alliance with me and be my friend. And if they're going to be my friend, then we are going to have a very good relationship right here. This was a bit of a risk because I didn't know how they would react, but it looks like they take alliances seriously, so I'm not going to attack yellow this game unless I have to. The green player has uh, taken a very safe conservative first turn. Uh, taking just put marking their troops there. Maybe they'll be looking to slowly take over the uh, the Egypt continent. And now the pink player is doing what I expected. They're immediately going to slam and take over uh, Australia, which frankly I don't even think is a bad decision. Uh, and this is because they have a six right here in India that they can immediately use to uh, defend themselves with. And the blue player can't retaliate against it. And we can see the troop count here, like after this first turn. Look at, at uh, the blue player. They're almost dead. Uh, this three attacking, I think, like, uh, would be a mistake. I would just fortify this six to guard the continent, and then they should be fine. Yes. A excellent first move by the pink player. I think they were overthinking things like a little bit about what they wanted to do. But end of the day, a sol solid play. I as this game uh, develops here, uh, I think I'm going to have to make a play uh, for South America. The green player is going to be making a play uh, for Africa. The blue player is just going to die. Uh, no other way around it. They're going to try to suicide into the, uh, the pink player because they can't do uh, anything at this point. They're manual rolling it and just getting the, um, the worst dice in the world and losing everything uh, right away without even getting a card. Uh, I would not be surprised if they bought it out at this point. At this point, yeah, they're continuing to manual roll to get like a better odds for themselves, but uh, they're going to die very, very soon. Uh, it looks like um, in the purple player's case, I think they have a move uh, towards the Europe continent. So I think they can get this within like like a three or four turns, and it's going to depend to see how aggressive the uh, the pink player is uh, towards letting them keep it. Uh, 
as or um, if the green player will also like uh, let them keep it. Now, on my turn here, uh, I think what I'm going to do because I don't know how the pink player is going to like react to me or like the yellow player is I am going to take uh, two territories and then just uh, fortify back. And the reason is, is that I want to just make people know that I am making my claim to this continent and that if you attack me, it's going to be taking a large number of troops, but I'm not going to be doing anything crazy on like, like the first turn like, and, and dare someone to attack me. I want to get a couple more troops and really get my position in a good place. And now with yellow fortifying themselves here, it's clear that they take the alliance very seriously. And I want to let them know that they should be attacking green, uh, that they should be attacking me, because I want them to know I want them to take the North America bonus. And they gave a heart back. So yeah, I'm going to respect like their alliance uh, that they're doing. Now, the green player is making a very aggressive move uh, towards me, where they're leaving their 13 right here. Not a big fan of that, uh, but I can't really do much uh, right now uh, about it. So the question is, do I want to try to take over South uh, America on this turn, or do I want to hold get a card somewhere, maybe with my three in Africa, and then try to hold and wait uh, for a better uh, situation for myself. I thinking the latter uh, is better, because again, I don't know what this green player is going to do. Uh, I will be probably giving up the kill on the, uh, the blue player as a result, but I I'm more than fine with that. This is a six player game, it's fixed. What's really important is establishing like a, a lead uh, over your opponents. So I think uh, I'm more than happy uh, giving up a kill uh, at this time. The blue player, uh, I would not be surprised if they bought it at this point. Uh, their game is 100% over right now. I, I don't see uh, what they can do uh, about this situation. So I think uh, right now, this is very common, like when players just leave, you see the bar going slowly over and over. When it hits like about like the player icon is when like uh, they start like uh, botting and maybe the bots fast, like they'll take a card, but most likely they'll skip a card, pass, and then just bot out for the rest of the game. And about right here, they should be botting, yep. There they have their troops. They're going to get ready to make the attack and maybe make it or fail. They just made it on time. All right, so that's the uh, the blue player basically having their game over at this point. Interesting choice of the uh, the purple player leaving their troops here. Uh, I'm not sure what uh, they are trying to do about it. Yeah, the yellow player is letting me know if I want to take over uh, South America, uh, I can do so. But I want to follow my gut, and I want to take over this area here. So, let's see. I do have a, a, a good 10 card set. This is very, very nice. Uh, so I have a couple of options. If the yellow player hits the green player, which they're doing, and I'm very, very happy about, uh, I would I could potentially try to take the green player out uh, for, th for their cards. So that is uh, one option for me. Uh, the yellow player's also giving me a path to leave North America, which I will definitely do so. Now, since the green player has about uh, 18 troops, it may not be worth uh, killing them right now. The only play that may uh, be worth it for me uh, is for me to take out the blue player. And the only way that will happen is if um, either A, like the purple player takes out this five, or the pink player takes out of the five. 
the second these troops in, uh, in Europe go, I can potentially uh, go for it. But as it is, it looks like the game is really kind of like to stabilize uh, and develop. Uh, and I would put the purple player in a good chance like to be in a good position because again, they have only the three border Europe or the yellow player because they only have like a one border North America given I have a strong alliance with them. Uh, I can see myself probably working with uh, yellow very, very closely this game uh, in order to try and uh, get the win. So let's see what the blue player is doing. So it looks like they got a, uh, a trade in on here. So yeah, now they just hit the pink player hard and then they hit me. So unfortunately, my uh, troops are kind of trapped uh, at this point and the yellow player is uh, just going to like eliminate them because it's not worth it for me to uh, hit a uh, three. But we will make do with it and just try our best to continue like, uh, with this game. We're definitely falling behind, but we're definitely not out of this yet. Uh, you know, doesn't people know my motto? It's like never give up, like uh, never surrender. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm kind of curious about now is uh, what is a purple player uh, going to do with this seven right here? Are they trying to make a play for like Africa? Like they keep putting the troops here, which I just doesn't make sense. I, I, I don't know what they are doing uh, right here. Okay. So I'm absolutely going to trade in uh, my set uh, at this time. I don't think it's um, it's worth, hmm, could it be worth it for me to try to take out the yellow player? If I do that, I would get three tr troops. Hmm. And then it would be good, but I think I wanna keep an alliance with yellow because they've really been working hard for me this game. So instead, what I'm going to do, given that they have a strong alliance with them, is I'm going to take over here, just do a light border defend, attack yellow here, and then finally suicide, uh, wait, my troops in like this. And I, I was thinking really hard if I wanted to, uh, take out the yellow player, but really they are signaling to me that they want to have a strong alliance. And if I'm having an alliance with the strongest player uh, in this game, uh, I want to keep it uh, as such. So I will gladly give up a couple of points knowing that the yellow player has my back and that they're going to make a lot of moves like this game in my uh, favor. And maybe if I can manipulate the yellow player, uh, I in turn can get a, a strong advantage. So now let's see what the green player uh, wants to do here. So it looks like they put a lot of their troops uh, right next to me and are trying to block me uh, from getting cards. This, I think I can be like a uh, fine with like uh, right now because and this is a, I think where a lot of the theory comes in on risk that I'm more than happy to share with the audience here is what is the value of a card? Is it really the end of the world if you're missing a card? And so and every time that you attack uh, with a troop, right, you're going to get one soldier, one cavalry, one artillery, right? Ideally, if you get the perfect match of one of each, you get a 10 trade, maybe even a super lucky a 12 trade, and you're just in amazing shape to do well uh, like in the game. And each card is worth like three and three quarter points, right? Then that's how you get super unlucky, you get the worst thing possible. The, uh, the two soldiers, the two knights, and then the third soldier on your last card, and you get a four trade in over five cards. Well, now the value of the troops that of all those cards is only worth maybe about 0.8 troops over a five card turn. And then the question becomes, what is the average relative value that you are getting um, out of all of that? Like wh what can you expect to have from the best case scenario of 12 troops 
in three cards versus four troops in five cards? Well, the answer that I give to that is about two troops, right? And the reason why each card is worth about two troops is that if you think about it, like like the best, like a trade is like 12, like the worst is like a four. So the average is about an eight, right? Like like a three cannons. And you're more or less likely to get a, uh, a set over a period of four cards on average. And then the odds of this, like, and this is available on the, uh, the Risk Discord, which I'd like to uh, recommend you to join, join. Like, I think a set on three is around like like 42%. And this is because of like, you have wild cards, which give a uh, an option. And then uh, a, a set on three is around like like a 75% uh, percent or so. Again, because of the power of the wild cards that you may be ab uh, potentially able to get. Yeah, now the uh, the yellow player is making a, uh, a good move here to uh, take out the blue player uh, for their cards. However, they did lose a lot of troops right there because they were not using the uh, the slider. <laughs> uh, but uh, in all seriousness, the yellow player um, is taking advantage of the extra troops we're getting from North America, and they uh, do look like they're advancing the game. So now it's going to be about what does the the, the green player want to do here? Because uh, it doesn't look like they are really able to do much. Like they can leave this 27 here, but again, it's going to take them a while to get cards. They're going to continue to get weaker. And if they get like a two weak or someone attacks them, uh, they can easily get taken out. So it's going to be interesting to see how long they want to keep uh, this tension with me. I am fine uh, keeping like the uh, the tension like like a four now because again I'm going to be building up a lot more uh, than them, and because at the end of the day they're going to be averaging about uh, two uh, tr troops a turn with their cards, but I'm getting the value of this continent uh, right here. Ooh, and now the pink player is offline. Yeah, I think the green player is going to be the next one to go uh, in this situation. Uh, based on what is uh, going on right now. Oh, is that a, a, a glitch right there where the, uh, the bot is not taking over the, uh, the Middle East territory? Uh, let's see. Okay. Oh, the pink player is back. Yeah, they're not botting out. So they're no longer defending their Australia bonus, uh, but they are here. Okay. Okay, good on them for coming back uh, into the game. If you notice on my turn, uh, if I wanted to, I can potentially go uh, and try to kill them. But again, it doesn't really make sense like uh, for me to do so uh, right now. Because again, I want to, I want to cons one of the important principle is the value of the cards, right? If I take out a player, how many cards would I get on any uh, given, given turn? Well, the most that I could expect is about, oh, okay. Uh, purple just took over Australia. <laughs> eh, too funny. But given the value of everything, like, uh, of what's going on right now, <laughs> I'm quite fine sitting, like, uh, right here and putting the pressure on the green player, because they are not going to hit me, uh, at all. The yellow player is also recognizing they can just sit in North America because, again, the value of the troops that they're getting is a lot more. Yeah, so now the uh, the green player is slow. Yeah, they attacked in uh, Europe, breaking the, the purple player. So this is good, and this is why I think I like to play with blizzards. The very first game that I played... Uh, which is a classic, like, a uh, fix no blizzards. Well, the game lasted a very, very long time. It's actually kind of funny that very early on in my YouTube career, that's my most popular video. When I didn't even have, like, an intro, I didn't have a microphone. I also was playing in the beginning, you just heard a little, that loud boom, boom, boom. At... <laughs> but 
if you kind of dislike the idea of like uh, stalemates occurring within your games, uh, what, what's great about blizzards is that they uh, create um, imbalances, right? And those imbalances greatly in increase the chances of your games ending like a lot more quickly. Because if you notice, right, like this North America player, uh, yellow is very, very strong uh, right now. The uh, and again, the Europe player, like again, I think it was a bad move for like a purple to give up their whole location like that, just to take Australia. Okay, look at that, they only have, uh, they were able to get a very, very lucky uh, 10 set, but they could have been potentially close to dying. Like they're going to take out the pink player here, but going to a concept I was saying before, before like the game was like developing very, very rapidly is, Okay, the purple player is not taking over the pink player, which I th is, is the correct move right there. And because if the purple player were to have gone try to defeat the pink player, they would have only gotten, uh, probably lost around like 20 troops or so to get two cards. Remember, each card is worth about two troops. So they're sacrificing 20 troops in order to gain about four troops on average. It's not worth it. For them to be uh, doing that. So with that in mind, I'm just going to take uh, one card right here and like a uh, pass at this time. Because again, why do I want to take out the green player? Uh, they only have their their value is worth about like what? <laughs> I guess I have the title of the video right here. Uh, like what is the value of a card when to go for the kill because right now I shouldn't be going on the kills on any of these people I'm just going to continue to like slowly expand uh, I think I'm going to try to eventually move and take over the Africa continent given the way that the board is developing right now and that's going to allow me to match the troop output uh, of the yellow player and once that occurs, I should be in a good spot. And oh my goodness, guys. Remember I said a good trick is always checking out the battle log? Look at these troops lost. 17 to my 11. I only killed 11 troops. Jeez, I am getting some bad luck. Well, I did sacrifice a lot of troops to give yellow to North America. So that's about three or four troops there. But I, I'm not getting the best luck uh, right now with that for sure. But really, uh, at this time, the, the best thing that I can be doing uh, for myself is, yeah, just stabilizing like uh, my position and continuing like uh, to try to get cards. Right now, I'm in second place. I'm, I'm, I'm second place like uh, in like the, the oh, sorry, third place in the troops. Uh, but I have a little bit of like those extra cards like uh, right there over like the purple player now that I'm like uh, outside here and that's going to allow me to continue like uh, developing an advantage. And the, and the pink player is going to have it in for the purple player given like what they did. Again, I can't stress how bad it is for them to have moved from Europe where they're in an amazing position to Australia where now they're just in an okay position. It's gonna, it could be very, very easy for them to get uh, trapped in there with other players getting very strong continents. The way that I see the game I got developing here at this time is that eventually uh, someone is going to go on a kill for the on the pink player who again is very very weak uh, at this time or uh, the green player who again is, is unable to be like a uh, getting a, a set So what I will do here is I'm just going to take uh, one card again using the slider uh, I explained this very well uh, in one of my videos um, I'll make sure to like a uh, link it in the uh, the uh, the end card if you want to watch the end of the video But basically in that progressive video I give a, a good detailed in-depth explanation of the importance of using the slider the short answer as to why I do it uh, is because I'm going to lose less troops uh, on average 
like uh, when attacking. Balance splits could have you lose more troops the larger my armies are when attacking. And the green player just suicides into me. Ah. That's unfortunate. That was obviously uh, a bad move right there. <laughs> Probably have to redo this video. Well, we'll see. If I manage to come back, that would be really, really cool. But uh, most likely, I am uh, going to die at this point. I'm no longer needed for the balance of the game. Yeah, now the green player is just uh, offline uh, at this point uh, as well. Unfortunate, but it is uh, what it is. So let's see what the uh, the pink player does uh, at this time. Really what they should be trying to do is uh, taking out the uh, green player, which honestly would make me uh, pretty, pretty happy uh, in order for them to do so. But yeah, they're not even doing that. So now the, uh, the green player should be going for the kill. Uh, sorry, the purple player should be going for the kill uh, on the green player. Uh, ideally, maybe if they mess up the kill. Oh, okay. I'm going to get the kill. Well, maybe I can stay alive a little bit because again, the yellow player has been wanting to like uh, stay my friend. Maybe I can get a good set and that's going to allow me to stay alive. Oof. But most likely uh it, it's just going to be a good decision for the yellow player to like to want to kill me and then have a strong two-point guard over north and south america they would dominate the game and uh, they would just not be able to do uh, anything about it but thankfully i do get the kill on the green player who suicided into me i'm also going to get the 10 set which is going to be uh very very nice I'll retake over um, South America right here, and then I'm just gonna have to stay uh, very, very uh, simple. And I got another wild card. Oh my gosh. Well, fortunately I have two horses, so if I trade in, it would just be for three car cards. And it looks like the yellow players had enough, and yes, this is why I was so nice to the yellow player before. The yellow player is treating this alliance very, very seriously. So I think the only path to victory I have at this point is the yellow, the blue, purple player is going to need to suicide into the yellow player. It is certainly possible, but it is uh, unlikely. The other option of what uh, I can do is I can try to uh, eventually, in, in a very slow position of time, take over Africa. But I really just need to be as passive and uh, as safe uh, as possible right now. And I need to try to discourage players from taking me out which is why I think I need to trade in right now. Yeah, the purple player cannot kill me because of the way that I move my troops around. So again, I'm in Congo, Madagascar, and here. They can't do it. If they hit me, they hit me, but uh, they're just gonna be giving the game to the yellow player uh, if they decide to do that. So we'll see what they do. Hopefully they don't, but I accept it if it does happen. Okay, they just attack the uh, the Congo area. And now what are they going to do? Okay, they're moving their 15 back uh, down to here. Cause it looks like they're trying to take over the area. Okay, I'm turning in my set and I am going to take this over. So now I'm only gonna have one card and I'm going to have uh, 27 troops. 
I should be able to stay alive uh, with that because the yellow player has such a strong alliance with me and is taking the alliance very seriously. They could have had been in a dominating position to win the game and instead they are just passively taking and holding uh, the North America area. It's really on the other players to do something at this time against the strength of the yellow player. Given the suicide that the green player had against me, the only thing that I can try to do is just take a card, wait for the game to play out into the late game, and that's the only way that I can try to make a comeback. Ah, oh, the way that I'm tested, guys. The way that I am tested. <laughs> I certainly miss doing uh, these types of videos and like uh, these types of games on the ladder again because you never know what's going to happen. Hopefully the pink player attacks the 9 and it creates some tension. It looks like they're just going to attack uh, the purple player. Again, like, the pink player just seems to be a very big deep thinking player. It just it takes a very long time. Uh, with their moves. But uh, it looks like uh, the the purple player is getting like their 15 troops trapped here. And they're not really in a situation where they're going to be able to, like, to attack me. Huh. Okay. More tension. It looks like the, um, the purple player is uh, attacking uh, pink which is uh, good for me. I just need to continue to play very, very safe and make it so people don't come after me. I need to keep myself safe. Right now, uh, the yellow player is very close to winning this game. And because we're a very important principle in uh, classic fix is the... Uh, the idea that if you have more troops than all players combined, then you can go for the win. But I think they just made a very strategic error right here. They have just put China next to Siam. And it seems that they, uh, I don't think the purple player is going to like this. I wouldn't be surprised if their 49 slammed uh, into the 16. It looks like, yeah, the pink player is continuing to just try like, to take and hold Europe and playing a very uh, passive game uh, at this time. So even though they've been taking like some hits, like I think all they want to do is hold the Europe area. I'm fine with this because if the, if the, uh, the pink player and the yellow player stay about equal in strength, that's going to allow the game to stabilize. And yeah... Yep, as I thought, since the yellow player overextended, now they got hit. And and now look at this. Look at this comeback, guys. I was at five troops. Look at this. I am staying alive in this game right now. How did I do this? Jeez. I thought I would have to, like, uh... Scrap this because it was such a, like a, a silly video like to watch and just like have me like uh, fall apart. And I have a ten set. Oh my guys, I'm back in this game because the yellow player is gonna retaliate so hard against the purple player because of their move that they made before. They may even suicide into them, and if the pink player doesn't make a move. I could potentially go in for the win. No way. Oh my gosh. Okay, the, the yellow player isn't doing a full suicide, but they are uh, defending their borders right now. Uh, we got to see, is the pink player going to do anything to now go and attack the, uh, the yellow player? Yeah. I'm really glad I did not take the yellow player out earlier. They are in a, uh, a strong, our alliance is very strong. And because I was respecting the yellow player this whole time, they in turn are respecting me. Okay. 
So what is the pink player going to do now? It looks like they're just like um, slowly trying to take like a, some cards and continue expanding. And again, just forcing tension between the uh, the yellow player and the um, wow. Okay, and now they just attack like a four. Yeah, the yellow player is just going to be very very upset about this. I'm turning in my set now because of how weak I am. And what I am going to do, yeah, I'm just going to continue to defend myself very, very hard. I'm going to move and take over the area and put a light guard in uh, for myself. And I'm just going to try to take and hold Africa at this time because... I have not been attacking anyone, and I've just been trying to keep myself like uh, within this game. Like think about it, the yellow player is going all in attacking the purple player. I expect the uh, the purple player to have a set to go in all in hitting the yellow player again, and the pink player. Uh, we haven't been hitting each other like the whole game, and they've been very very passive. I find it very very unlikely for them to uh, continue doing this. And right now we see one of the classic. Um, scenarios where this is why what the purple player did much earlier it was so bad for this game when he went from Europe attacking ping very very hard and going into the uh, the Siam territory right now the pink the purple player is about to lose this game because they attacked the old player too aggressively and all the other players now are getting these huge bonuses there is little, if anything, uh, the purple player can do uh, at this time. Wow. Wow. So, I one thing I do dislike is that the pink player did open up their uh, purple stack, but it left the 23 there. I don't like that very much because the purple player made a sign. Yeah, but no, they just want to keep attacking uh, yellow as we see right here. See, and they're opening up the 42 stack as well. That's not good. I, yeah, that, that is just uh, not good uh, at all. So I am uh, at this time uh, just going to keep uh, just defending my borders right here. I'm going to keep on getting cards and I'm just going to very slowly just try to get back into this game. I have to play passively right now. If I play aggressively, I'm just going to die because I'm the weakest player. If you're the weakest, one of the weaker players, you should let the strong players attack each other. Yeah, and we can see right here, the yellow player is getting ready to eliminate the... the okay. Yeah, they're not taking out. They're, they're just continuing to try to be very, very passive. And they're also right below a very, very nice number. <laughs> if I was a pink player, a very smart move would be, be have their 23 in India, attack China, and then just refortify back to their uh, continent. If they're able to do that, they will be in a very, very strong like a uh, situation. Here, yeah, now they're just leaving their, um, their 16 there. They just need to move this 16 away and they're going to be fine. Yep, they're just leaving their their stack like right there. Uh, I would not be surprised if the purple player just... Uh, wow, okay. All right, can I go for the kill on the purple player? I think I should. I think I just have enough troops. And I'm not going to break uh, pink here just because I want to make sure we're keeping the alliance. So I'm going to take out the purple player. I should get this. I got the kill. Very, very nice. And look at this. I got a nice 10 set as well. Guys, I am back in this game. All right. Let's uh, bring in the Siam. Okay. Now, uh, 
look at this. So I'm at 78 troops. The yellow player is at uh, is at the 68. I'm still doing okay right now. I'm going to just go back and uh, let the players know if they want Australia, they can take it. I just had to do it to take out the purple player uh, right now. I'm just going to leave everything I have on my 60 because no player has a stack bigger than that. And as long as I have my 60 safe, I should be uh, okay. The key is going to decide uh, what is the pink player going to do now. They're going to be the ones that are going to be deciding this game. Ugh. I can't believe this, guys. I, I, I'm i back. I got another 10 set. I am. I basically have the same number of troops as the yellow player. Ah, it's just all going to depend on what the pink player does and how they want to attack. We're in a very delicate situation right now. If the pink play, player attacks me very hard, yellow wins. If they attack yellow very hard, I win. So let's see what they do. It looks like they're going to take Australia, and I am fine with that. Let's see. What, okay, yep, the pink player is going in they're attacking yep they're taking australia which i'm fine with look they, they lost a lot of troops we're still very very close i got it together and again I, I i am fine with this situation uh right now i don't need to do anything i also need, need to trade in like as well because i don't want to create any uh, undue pressure on myself all I'm going to do is take um, one card and go back. I don't really care about if they're holding like the extra bonuses because like they're pretty weak. All I need to do is create tension uh, between the uh, the pink player and the yellow player uh, right now. Yep. So as long as they're creating like the, the tension between like of themselves, uh, I can eventually build up an advantage. Like the yellow player does have the advantage uh, over me, but it's not a, a significant advantage. So it's all, and again, I haven't done anything to the pink player all game. And at a minimum, I will keep my South America bonus. So it's all gonna be about what does the pink player uh, want to do? It looks like they're gonna try to get out of the, um, of Europe and then try to defend their new Australia bonus. They are breaking me in Africa. This is fine. It's why I left very, very light borders uh, on myself. And again, this is why I'm not attacking the uh, like the pink player like uh, at all right here. I am going to trade in my set. I'm going to continue to play very slowly uh, and carefully because I want to be able to uh, just like not throw away like uh, my advantage right here. I can come back and win this game, guys. I will come back and win this game where my name is not all of XC. I mean, technically my name is real life is not all of XC. That would just be silly if that was the case. <laughs> but for me, I will always be uh, all of XC. All right, it looks like the yellow player now is just slowly taking one card uh, per turn. Uh, I'm just gonna be curious to see what does the pink player uh, want to do at this time. Again, I'm continuing to, like, to not attack them uh, at all. The yellow player is building an advantage, but it's not guaranteed to be giving uh, them like, like a victory. The key, so, I want the pink player to create tension with the yellow player uh, of, some, that, of some kind. If we can create that tension, we can get a lead. But that may take uh, some time. Like the, the key is gonna be what's gonna happen uh, with this 11. And again, I just need to play it nice and safe. I'm just gonna keep bringing my troops in, keeping my army strong, 
the yellow player is getting a lot of troops, but a, a fundamental principle is you can't get more troops than both players combined. I just... So right now, since I have 95 troops, the pink player has 63 troops. We, we would have more troops together than the uh, yellow player. They are at five cards. They are getting strong, but I don't think they're... they're the yellow player is gonna really like like take like the full advantage of it. I just need to keep uh, the alliance with yellow uh, as strong as possible, and as long as I keep that alliance strong, I can eventually wait uh, for something to break. Another ten set, very nice. So I am uh, at this point. Just going to uh, continue attacking uh, a one. I'm going to keep on getting uh, cards. And I'm going to be fine uh, right now. As long as I don't uh, overextend, I should uh, be okay. Yeah. Oh, I love the yellow player leaving this here. I'm going to send him some hearts because I love uh, him creating that barrier uh, of some kind. Because that's just going to make it very, very hard for the pink player to come like uh, towards us. Like I said, the yellow player is strong, but the entire game, the alliance has been very mutually like uh, beneficial. The yellow player has uh, kept me alive. Uh, when they could have broken me like uh, multiple times. Maybe the yellow player does end up winning this game because they, they play like a very strong of social element to everything that is going on. But I, I, I'm fine with that. I, I have to respect a player that makes like a, those like decisions. Yeah, so the pink player is just taking a, uh, a lot of territory uh, right here. I am uh, just going to turn in my set uh, at this time. I'm just going to attack uh, one territory of the, uh, I would say like the, the yellow, uh, the, probably the, the yellow player here. And then I'm just going to move my troops in here. Just keep everything together. It, it, it seems so passive, right? And and for people who like don't know me as well in the community, I'm normally a very active, aggressive player. Like uh, right now, when you're playing against like people like on the ladder, sometimes passive play is the best play uh, for these type of games. Pink is now at a nice number, and. It looks like uh, there's a lot of things I can like uh, potentially do. Like uh, ideally, what I would love to happen is for the yellow player to try to eliminate like the pink player because right now the balance is close, but it's still uh, in my my favor. The pink player has been my friend the uh, the entire game. And so I need to continue uh, respecting that when possible. So, what I what are some things that uh, I can do? I could try to maybe get Europe. Would the yellow player allow me um, to hold Europe? Uh, is the question. If I took Europe, they may risk like ending the uh, alliance of some kind for me. And if they ended the alliance, that can be uh, very, very bad uh, for my game. So I'm just going to continue uh, playing this slow uh, right here. Just going to take one card, put everything to my stack. I'm a little trapped uh, at this point. I can no longer eliminate the pink player. But again, uh, I'm not expecting the um, the yellow player to retaliate against me because of how of strong of an alliance we've had together the uh, the entire game. What I really uh, just need to happen 
is like for the 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 yellow player to overextend on some kind attacking pink and yeah they're attacking pink a lot uh right here making this like a little bit closer so it is paving the way uh for me to potentially uh get the kill or sorry go for the europe continent oh my gosh it, am i going to could I come back from this? Like, it's not crazy uh, right now for me to come back. The, the, the pink player must recognize that yellow and me are just in a strong alliance based on what they're doing. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if they were thinking, oh, this uh, red and yellow player are colluding the whole time. I'm going to report to SMG. My, my name is Pink. But no. No, like this is just a human element, right? This is just how uh, we are perceive, perceiving the game. Like it was mutually beneficial for Yellow and I to work together. Okay. I'm going to see, do they want to attack uh, pink? Yeah, they want me to attack pink. I will uh, do so. Now, when the sets are, the troops are getting very, very big here, using the slider on a turn like this is very, very uh, important. Yeah, and now I'm going to tell them to attack pink. Hopefully they attack like the three and stuff and a little bit like a bigger troops. And they lose like a little bit more. So I want them yellow to know that I'm going to work with them. Yeah, so, so Pink knows they can't hold Europe. The only thing uh, that they can hold uh, is the Australia. And again, um, we're, we're just going to continue gaining an advantage uh, over them. I just need to figure out a way to, to get into a situation where I can get more troops then yellow to slowly catch up with them. There's like a 40 troop gap right now because they hold North America and I only hold uh, South America. You get another uh, 10 set, uh, which is nice. Um, I do uh, want to make sure my, my, my thing is not getting trapped. And I want to be, be able to go down and take over Africa if I want to later. So I'm just going to attack one, very passively allowing the the, uh, the yellow tr player to get one less troop and bring everything back together. I still have pathways open to attack uh, if needed. But now we've entered like a state of balance and really I just need to find a way, how can I get Africa or how can I get Europe? And if I can do like a one or the other, I think I can be like a okay. <sighs> it looks like they're going to be trying to go for uh, Europe again. Are they going to try to defend it uh, more at this time? Let's see uh, what they decide to do. I'm going to make a... Uh... Yep, another move to uh, hit the pink player. I'm going to get this right so that way the uh, I lose the least number of troops possible. And again, I'll, I'll just keep playing this slow. I'm going to keep working with the yellow player on this. And I'm going to find a situation where I can gain uh, the advantage. I just wish I had like more troops than yellow. But again, uh, them having North America the entire game has just been a very, 
powerful advantage for them. Again, the power of these blizzards right here, of having it be a two border area versus a, uh, a three border area. And with me guarding them, there just isn't much that the pink player can do about it. I'm so close. I just need to find a way to get potentially pink to suicide uh, on yellow. Can I get this? Hmm. How can I get the kill? Ooh, the, uh, the pink player has just spotted. Okay, this, I don't know if the pink player has left or if something else has happened. But this does change the, um, the dynamic like a little bit. Because I don't know if the pink player is going to come back or if they truly have uh, just given up. If they've given up, I could potentially uh, come back or and try to attack the yellow player. But again, like they're so, so strong. Again, they're 50 troops ahead. Uh, I, I don't think, even you know, if I were to attack like their largest army with like a uh, 140 troops to 177, I, I don't think I could win that. I think more often than not, the, um, the, the yellow player would have uh, lots of troops left and would be uh, absolutely fine. Yeah, I think the odds of me winning that would just be very, very uh, small. So it doesn't look like they are attacking me, though. Ugh. What I need to have... So this is now, I think, a very challenging 1v1 uh, situation. What I need to have happen is... Yellow needs to overextend in, in some kind or trap themselves in uh, some way. They could potentially like uh, try to kill me, or maybe they're trying to. Are they trying to? Def they did trap their uh, largest stack, but again, I can't kill the pink bot. It would just give the game to the yellow player. Ugh. I'm so close, guys. Yeah, the, the yellow player, sorry, the pink bot is going all in on this uh, continent right here. So, the question is, should I go for it or should I move out? If um, I move out, the pink player will go in and start hitting everything. But then it can also then eventually break the yellow player, and maybe then uh, the yellow player may overextend in hitting the uh, the pink bot. I think I'm actually okay uh, with that, because again, like the yellow player can't even hit me uh, right now anyway. Because again, like they're very trapped uh, within this area. So I think I need to let the pink bot get really, really strong uh, right here and attack uh, Africa and yeah, break my South America. I don't care about that. I want them to go into the, uh, the yellow player. They won't be doing it this turn, but now yellow is gonna have to be starting to think about it. This has now become a very challenging 1v1 situation. But for a lot of players who don't know me, I was the 1v1 champion of the last tournament. Historically, I've not done the best in free-for-all tournaments. But in situations like this, I think I can work magic. Like Ideally, the yellow player should just hit their stack into me and then slowly beat an expert bot. Because bots are very, very easy to defeat. But I don't think the um, the yellow player is going to know uh, what to do here. It looks like they're just continuing to play this very, very passively. And they're slowly trying to get an advantage uh, 
through this. And now, yeah, so now they're splitting off their uh, largest stack. Yeah. Now that's at like a 160. All right. So what I need, I think I see my path to victory. Uh, what, what I need to do, because the bot clearly wants to expand into uh, North America, uh, is... We, I need to have the yellow player have to def keep defending that. And what's also going to happen is as the troop sizes get very, very big, it's going to be more likely that the pink player is going to go for attacking the yellow player, even if uh, the troop sizes, the yellow has more troop sizes than pink. What a lot of people don't realize, this is a, another fundamental math concept uh, right here, is, is when the troop sizes are very, very small, you can lose, you need like your, your 75, 80% higher than uh, another player. But as the troop sizes get get larger, it's going to be uh, more and more likely that the pink bot, or that, that uh, it can actually be favorable for a bot to go uh, for an attack. So what's, yeah, what's going to happen here is eventually I think the uh, the yellow player is going to like over not, not defend correctly against the uh, the pink player, and that uh, in turn is going to be my uh, path to victory here. So what I am going to do is use the slider, of course. Hit this. Um, I don't care if the pink player is getting more troops. I don't want them to put their attention towards me and try to defeat me. I need them to make a mistake with defending against the pink bot. I'm going to let the pink bot hold all of these contents because they're going to out expand the yellow player and eventually the, the, the yellow player may get a big hit against them. Okay, okay, the uh It looks, yeah, it looks like the bot's continuing to get strong here. Uh, the yellow player at any time could just be killing me, by the way. Like, this was a um, an actual game. Like, I would just be dead. But, again, like, the yellow player is just not making um, any of, like, a, those, like, attacks. So all I need to do here is just continuing allowing the bot to get strong and hoping that the yellow player uh, overextends a little bit right here. They are getting close to both uh, the, the bots and my troops, but I don't know if they have the ability to recognize that. See, look, they just lost all of those troops attacking right there. Now the difference between us is only like 70 to 80. I, this is such a weird, weird situation. Again, they can potentially go like a for the kill at any time. <sighs> it's all going to depend about what does the uh, the pink player uh, want to do here. Ideally, they should hit my stack, and, and they they probably could. They, they played a very, very uh, strong game uh, to get uh, to this situation. But hey, this would be a comeback for the, uh, the ages if I do say so myself. But I think I'm happy if I do decide or end up like uh, getting third if like uh, that is the case. This has been a good game, guys. Yep. 
the, yeah, the yellow player has gone for the kill. So we end up in third place here. Uh, there wasn't really much like that we can do, given like we were stuck like uh, at four troops. But we did our best to try to like uh, make a comeback here. Yeah. So this was a fun video. Uh, yeah. At this point, by the way, for people like who are new, you can see that the um, that the yellow player has a a lot more uh, less troops than the pink bot. But they're, they're going to be fine. Uh, this is because bots are very, very easy to beat. All you're going to see, like, uh, right here is the, is, like, the, uh, the yellow player is just going to hit the, the bot as much as possible, get their territory count very low, and then it's just going to allow the, um, and then the, the, pro, pro, the, the, the the, uh, the bot right here is not going to be attacking uh, yellow as much. Yeah, so, so we can see right here that the yellow player is just going to get more troops uh, than, the, than the pink bot. And then the, they're just going to be completely fine right now. Yeah, you can see right here they got some attacks, but they just gave the yellow player Asia. So you see they just got 17 troops. Now the difference is only 30 troops. So the yellow player... Is just going to go in and uh, take out like the remaining players like this. Yep. So you see right now, now like the, it, there's barely any difference between the uh, the bot and the other uh, pink player. So, yep. So the, the pink player is doing this perfectly, with slowly eliminating and taking out the bot. Yeah, so I think that's probably like a wrap like at this time, like a given like the um, like the length of the video. So I'll probably like exit this. The yellow players clearly got the win. You can see how they like, got uh, to defeat a bot. And um, I will end the video here. I hope everybody uh, enjoyed uh, this like a video and the, the comeback that almost was. And uh, if you like this video, feel free to uh, like uh, and subscribe. And I uh, and, uh, hope you... And, and enjoy like seeing like more videos from me. Uh, this is all of XC signing out.